welcome to After the 90. Um, I'm here at Easter Road Stadium this afternoon to talk to Christopher Nicholson. Chris, thanks for taking the time out to talk to us. Thanks for having me. Um, so today's topic is going to be, uh, obviously you work for the Scottish Association of Mental Health, SAMH, um, but you head up the Changing Room Project, um, which is which takes place here at Easter Road and across the city of Tynecastle. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do with the project? Yeah, so as you mentioned, I work for SAMH and uh, we've created the, the Changing Room Project, which is um, a pilot project that has been funded by the Movember Foundation um, and we partner with obviously Hibernian and a Big Hearts to deliver over there um, along with the SPFL Trust um, and yeah the project focuses on men's mental health and it's all about using the power of football to engage with guys uh, in their middle years specifically that's like 30 to 64 and um, we want to work with them because we recognize that's quite a hard to reach area in terms of mental health there's um obviously high rates of suicide within that age demographic and Sam H recognised that there was a need to engage with these guys and obviously football is a great tool or a great avenue to, to reach them. Uh, we've done we've done various courses now, we've been delivering the project since April 2018 so in that time we've worked with a bunch of guys and many of them have said you know I wouldn't have come to this thing if there wasn't the link to the football club and you know the opportunity to get to get into Easter Road. So by partnering with the clubs here in Edinburgh, especially Hibs uh, from the outset, has just enabled us to to reach a whole audience that typically don't talk about their mental health. For me myself, I've been a member of one of these courses mm -hmm. and I've I've done the full twelve weeks. And I mean, I wasn't going through a particularly bad patch myself, but I felt it you know good to keep my own mental health in check it's a big subject at the moment it's you know in the last two years it's absolutely exploded uh, with media yeah. outlets and such and um, at the beginning did you have a bit of trouble you know with people struggling to turn up because it's obviously it's hard for them to you know get through that door the first time you know to open themselves up yeah I, th I think that's a fair point that um, there's still a bit of stigma exists with mental health and uh, while mental health is something that we all have it can be good it can be bad um, it can just be kind of average at times. Um, it's something we all have and we've all kind of got that responsibility to look after it. So there is still that stigma that exists that maybe people don't want to be seen to go on something that is about mental health. Um, but getting in the door that first time is, is a challenge, but I think once people have overcome that, uh, they kind of recognise that, okay, this isn't so bad and it's actually something that's quite good for me. And even, you know, you touched upon it yourself, you weren't necessarily going through a bad time no. when you came on the course, but um, that that's an important point because whether you've got good mental health or bad mental health, it's something we can still all learn about and actually recognise and hopefully if we're able to, you know, take on a bit of information and learn something that if we do come across difficult times with our mental health, we'll be better equipped. To, to manage it and uh, look after ourselves. That that was one of our aims as a project, was to help guys self manage their mental health. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I went through the program and I've made, uh, you know, through the program I made friends that I probably know now for the rest of my life, yeah. and, and you know, we meet up from time to time still, you know, after the project. Um, but having people coming in, has it? Have you gotten a lot of feedback from people who've been through the course and, and come to you and said, look, it's done me the world of good you know it's made me see that mental health isn't necessarily you know the stigma is around yeah. when you say mental health to someone they immediately go oh bad yeah and that's the thing that you're trying to break which which is fantastic have you got much feedback to say from from you know from people who've been on the course oh you know we, we've we've a new, and shed a new light now on, on, on how we see mental yeah health. absolutely i mean from the outset we say look coming along might not improve your mental health it might not make you better um, but we recognize that it could be a really good thing for you and thankfully we have had a lot of positive feedback from people where they've come along and they've they've stuck with it maybe a bit unsure of what's going on to start with but decided to stick with it and we've had some great stories of, of guys that have come along and have developed new connections like you mentioned they've um, they've kind of been able to talk without any judgment about their mental health um, and that's a big thing because uh, I think that a lot of people are struggling with mental health but they're afraid to maybe 
address it or say anything. And so when you come into this environment where we're saying, look, no judgment here, you can talk about your mental health, you can be open uh, and people will understand probably where you're coming from. That's a massive thing. And I think that's a good release for people. And when they realize that, they start to really feel the benefits of coming along. And, you know, we've had great stories of guys that have come along to this and it's given them the confidence maybe to go and try something else or it's um, given them that new connections that they've managed to keep up. There's, there's one guy that came along to the change room right at the start and he said that every game he's been to since, he's met someone or recognised someone at the stadium that has gone through the change room. And actually when you start to, to think about the kind of effect of social connections that that's that's it in action that you're actually recognizing there's other people out there that are going through things but are able to to share their experiences and really benefit from that so the, the we'll, we'll go into the the change room project a bit further mm-hmm. it lasts 12 weeks um, and what's you know just for people who are watching or, or, or listening in you know what does it entail you know obviously it's hard to get through the door yeah but we want to put across kind of maybe a little Bits and pieces of what involved, what are involved. Yeah. So maybe you know make it easier for them to come along in future yeah, programs. Sure. Um, you know the project ultimately wants to improve social connections for guys, um, help them self manage their mental health better, but also reduce loneliness and isolation. And so we kind of we thought about these things as we developed a twelve week course, and within that there's a variety of activities that are kind of designed to to make the guys feel comfortable. Uh, it's designed to be enjoyable and it's also um, designed to kind of let them come into this football environment and, and get access to different parts of the stadium that maybe they don't normally see um, all the while talking about and addressing the issue of mental health and well-being amongst guys so um, we do different activities to kind of um, build up the 12-week program we do a quiz we do walking football we, we've done yoga before um, we do a walk and talk, which is when we get right out to the pitch side and as you know, we, we just kind of have a conversation. We start it in a relaxed way and, and build it up where we're actually able to address the real kind of issues. And um, guys um, often turn up um, to kind of just see what it's all about, but at the same time, they're wanting to talk about mental health and uh, we enable them to do that. We also have other sessions where, um, you know, a member of staff, either myself or my manager from uh, Sam H will you know, deliver a team talk, which is like a mental health awareness session. And that really allows us to get further into discussions about mental health. Um, we have a, a session that talks about stigma and discrimination, uh, both within football and, and within mental health and well-being. Uh, we have a speaker from the club who kind of shares his story. Uh, that's really powerful. And um, I think guys respond well to hearing other people's stories and other people's journeys. And essentially the 12-week programme that we've created is a bit of a journey for people and uh, once you come through it you're able to look back and for myself personally as well it's been a great experience because while I've maybe not had really um, big struggles with mental health I've actually learned to manage myself better and I've, I've learned from the guys that come in the course and I've always said that um, the people that attend the change room are the, the kind of the main success behind it you know they're the thing that keeps it going and uh, has kind of helped it really develop well. So yeah, and um, people who come to the changing room, for me, what I see as a great outlet is you're going and you're not knowing anybody going into it, and sometimes that's a, a plus because mm. people don't really know you from the get go. So what you talk about, yeah. it's almost like you're talking to a stranger, and sometimes that's you know yeah. easier for people to do. I, I've always said it: the hardest thing to do in the world is to talk about, it, and the best thing to do in the world is the same thing: Absolutely. talk about it. Yeah. And um, the pitch side uh, walk and talks. Uh, that's one thing that blew my mind right open because mm-hmm. you know within five minutes you're going from talking about you know um, one of the guys I was on the walk and talk with you know we were talking about his times watching Hibs you know 20 years ago yeah. in the stands he's pointing you know pointing where his season ticket was yeah. and where he sat and then you know five minutes later we're talking about uh, some of the struggles that he went through uh, throughout his life Yeah, and it's just you know getting that initial chat going and before yeah. you know it you're opening your entire life out to somebody who you didn't know 15 minutes ago but sometimes it's it's do you feel it's the best way to to open up is sometimes to just have someone that you literally have just met yeah definitely i think that you know like you say the walk and talk um you're it's really quite relaxed once you get into it and you feel you feel good doing it and 
there's something about that shoulder to shoulder conversation where you're just walking and you know it's not really awkward because you can always fall back on the football stadium yeah, yeah. and start speaking exactly. about football so um i mean you could do a walk and talk anywhere you could do it in the street but actually in that environment there's something extra that comes with it and you know i have to really kind of pay tribute to Hibs for actually allowing us to get in the stadium and they've been so good with giving us access and you know allowing me to base myself here and um that's really been key to the success of the project as well. We feel like the stadium and the environment is almost like an active player in the changing room. So, yeah, that shouldn't be underestimated at all. There's something about coming into your, your team's football stadium uh, it kind of puts you at ease. And a lot of the guys have talked about how they kind of feel relaxed. Speaking about mental health, it kind of it fits within the stadium environment. So, aye, it's been really positive. Walking talk. Yeah, and and obviously across across the way at Tankcastle, I'm sure they've done the same and opened up and and allowed you access to these same kind of yeah. things. And yeah, you know, I've not been over to any of the sessions across the way, but um, could you let us know a little bit of how how that's going? Because obviously the the Hibs one came up uh, first yeah. of all, and Aye. then you moved across to to Hearts, and how's that progressing so far? Yeah, absolutely. We we developed the model here. We started at Hibs, and actually we thought, okay, we've got a model that we think can be replicated elsewhere. Uh, hearts were keen to get involved um, and we did that through their uh, kind of charity the big hearts community trust mm. uh, so engaging with them we were able to put the 12 week program in place at time castle too and you know it's there's a slight tweaks you might make from each club obviously yeah. if you're doing a quiz you would have a hearts round <laughs> rather than a hips round yeah. but um or you could do either or and, and create a bit of politics. Exactly. It's all, but there's always <laughs> yeah. good banter that comes yeah, from it. Course, and that's, course, you'll know that yourself, going through the 12 weeks, the banter. Yeah, we, had a, the I mean, we had a staunch Rangers fan in with our group. Ah, know, exactly. Um, and that was that was quite fun because, yeah. you know, it was uh, you have a Rangers fan sitting in Easter Road. But he yeah. said himself, being, just being in a football stadium helped, you know, yeah. as you touched on. Definitely. Um, and if you're a football fan, you can just relate with the environment. Yeah. But, yeah, it's funny. Can you say that um, we... We employed a part-time worker for the project at Hearts, and he was a guy that had actually come through the project here at Hibs, the first one. He was a Hearts fan, <laughs> came through the project, became a volunteer, and they ended up working for us over at uh, Tyne Castle. And, you know, there's something in that that actually says, you know, football um, gets a hard rap a lot of the time for kind of controversies and maybe fan trouble, but football has the power to uh, break down rivalries and to actually unite pe unite people and so we saw a great example of fans from all over coming together here and then we obviously developed uh, Hearts and again um, yeah the project's gone well there we think we've had a really good response a lot of the guys have made really meaningful powerful connections and um, actually have just come on leaps and bounds with regards to their mental health as well so it's really encouraging to see consistency and the kind of feedback we get here and also over there and you know that gives us hope that we can continue and expand beyond Edinburgh. So you talked about expansion um, obviously you're, you're backed by the SPFL Trust do you see the changing room being extended beyond obviously Edinburgh and maybe hitting the likes of Motherwell, Hamilton, those areas and not just you know the Glasgow uh, clubs like Southern yeah. Rangers who would be fantastic to get on board but teams like Dunfermline you know Wraith Rovers Falkirk, you've got so many different outlets that are not even that far outside yeah. of Edinburgh. Is that is that something that you, you want to touch on? In the I future? Like, well, like I said, you know, we, we we feel we've got a model that can be replicated elsewhere, and the, the football clubs give us uh, access to a fan base, and that fan base will have people that are needing support for their mental health and well-being. So, um, you know, funded by Movember, we'll be looking to them to try and secure more. Uh, fingers crossed, but. Um, yeah, we've, we've got that model that we're happy with. We believe it's got the legs to, to grow uh, beyond here. So that's what we're ultimately looking towards, yeah. So you talked about uh, people's journeys and, um, you know, talking about your journey, how did you, you know, first get involved with, with Sam H and what drove yeah. you to, you know, well, where you are just now? Yeah, um, I've had a few jobs within uh, the kind of third sector. Um, so I was aware of Sam H. I had a real interest in mental health. Um, through other work that I've done, although I hadn't worked directly within mental health. Um, my first love was always football. You know, when I saw the opportunity to work within 
uh, a football environment, delivering a project that seeks to help people um, and uses football to do that. It was a no-brainer to, to go for it. And um, yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to be successful. And um, it's been a, a massive learning process for me in terms of um, working on a project like this, something that was new that maybe hadn't been done before. Um, and there were challenges about how we did that, but I've been supported by a great team at Sam H uh, with good partners in the SPFL Trust and, and Hibs and then obviously Big Hearts as well. So, uh, and having the backing of November has really allowed us to, to kick on and, and develop something we're really pleased with. Um, for me, it's been, like I said, a massive uh, learning experience um, about obviously things like project management, but also just a bit of mental health and, and engaging with people and um, the impact that actually communicating can have and actually providing an environment where we can talk about mental health without that judgment and that's that's been such a big thing in terms of um, the success of the project. Yeah. Uh, you talked about the, the walk on football and that's something that took me by surprise. Yeah. Uh, you know, walk on football, <laughs> you know, you go into it thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be easy, all I'm doing is walking around. But I think the hardest part is stopping yourself from running. <laughs> uh, obviously, I did the the Wednesday session uh, with, with the walk on football, and it was I was absolutely knackered after it. It's yeah. crazy how much you you completely overlook how tiring it is. It is. Um, but you do that outside of the changing room. There is also something that you do. Am I right in saying? Well, the, the we, we've done some sessions? walking football sessions with with the Hibs Foundation, the uh, Community Foundation, and uh, that was good. And it's something we can maybe think about developing again. Mm-hmm. Um, but the walking football, like you say, is just such a brilliant laugh. It's and it is. It's it's harder going. It's harder than you think it would be. You kind of come in with this ideas um, about what it's going to be like, how challenging it's going to be. But actually, um, it's it's not as easy as you think. And like you say, uh, trying not to run is one of the main challenges. I've al- I've often kind of compared the walking football with mental health as a whole. Sometimes you know we have our ideas of what it's going to be like or what you know what mental health is and. Um, you know the kind of old misconceptions that people think you just need to get on with it or toughen up or anything like that are so wrong and I think it's the same as of walking football people think it's going to be a doddle it's just for older people it's not (laughs) it's uh, it's something that uh, anyone can do and actually have a great laugh I think I've played more walking football this year than I've played actual football so I need to (laughs) I'm, I'm still the right side of 30 I need to address that well, the the walking football, I think the hardest thing to do is pass because you can't obviously pass. Normally, you've got the time to pass. Yeah. For people who are walking to go right to feet. Aye. The poor yeah. players get found out in walking football. <laughs> um, now, obviously, you do uh, drop in sessions as well yeah. um, outside of the 12 week program. So, yeah. is that desi- not designated, but is that also designed for people who've completed the program, don't really want to stop it going and have a chance to come back every month? Yeah. Um, the the drop in sessions were kind of created for a number of reasons. We, we felt like as we did more 12 week programs, a lot of the guys were saying, how can we kind of keep up with each other? And we don't want to just stop talking yeah. and, and we want to maintain the connections that we've established. So um, we put in what uh, drop in sessions for that, um, for that reason, but also maybe it's an opportunity for somebody if they're thinking about the 12 week program, but not sure about it, they can come to the drop in and maybe just get a feel for what the changing room is like. So um, these these sessions aren't too structured. They're pretty relaxed. Um, it's a chance to catch up. We do it on a Monday night, so you can talk about the, the weekend's football. <laughs> weekend's you football. can either unload yeah. or just uh, have a good yarn about that. Um, and we do it every second Monday. So uh, we do it here, and then the next week it'll be at Hearts, and then back here again. So it means that there's a drop in either Hearts yeah. or Hibs every, every Monday. And uh, it's just a chance to come and talk about football, keep up some social connections and um and the attendance is good for, for, for those people. Yeah, we've seen a real increase in attendances recently. They've been quite steady and again yeah, we've been allowed to just access different parts of the stadium and you know sometimes we'll go for a walk around the pitch if the weather's decent and um ah, it's been really important for the guys that um want to maintain the connections they've created. So yeah, we're pleased with how they're going too. So you talked about the, the age range for the programmes between uh, 30 and 65, the kind of middle years. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a tough time sometimes for a lot of people, you know, it's it's at that age where, you know, you have a family, uh, you have a job, you know, things can be tough. Um, but I've what I've noticed is it the programme does a really good job of 
helping people get past those struggles. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that I've I've been on the the program with, you know, I've actually believe it or not seen such an improvement from when they got to the program. Yeah. Now looking back at looking at you know on social media what they're doing now, yeah. uh, it's just you know I don't know whether you keep up with with some of them, but. Um, if you could see yourself, you know how they're doing now. I think you'd be absolutely shocked at yeah. how well things are going. Um, yeah, it's good. You know, family-wise, job-wise, I mean, mm. they've improved, you know, tenfold since uh, since when I think back when they first came into the program. Yeah. Um, so for feedback for yourself, I can honestly say it's it's doing a fantastic job. No, that's great, and and obviously we really appreciate that. It means a lot because that's what we've set out to do. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, we can't make any promises that. Um, people will definitely improve by coming along but we think it is an environment where there is that opportunity to see improvement and um, that's what that's what we want to keep doing yeah and that's a, and that's a great thing that you don't promise any progress because the last thing you want to do is obviously make false promises to yeah, people um, yeah. but it, it also improves you know it gives people more of a chance in, in their head to to come along because you're not promising they're going to get better you're right. not promising things are going to improve you're just giving them an outlet uh, yeah. to you know, talk to people and, and yeah. you know maybe help get them past tough times. Yeah. And a lot of people who will be watching this video are actually in that age bracket. Mm-hmm. So just for them to know, when are when are you when is your next program starting, or when do you have one lined up, or if you're in the middle of one, or we've just we've just finished one. We're we're currently doing one that is working specifically with a group of veterans from the armed forces. Wow. Um, that'll be coming to an end in a few weeks, and. Um, Following on from that, we, we've submitted our bid for further funding, so we're kind of sitting tight just sure. now. Um, the drop-ins are still happening every second Monday. Um, we've got a website, so the information will be on there um, about dates and times and you know, how to get along. On your social media channels and stuff, Facebook? Twitter. Yeah, well, Sam H uh, yeah. do Facebook and Twitter, and obviously sometimes we'll go out over the club's uh, yeah. media Good. channels too, so um, that's really useful for us. But yeah, we've got a website, which I'd obviously encourage people to look at because while there's information about the activities we do, some people might not do that and that's fine, but there's also good information about mental health and well-being and looking after yourself and, and things like that there as well. So that's worth looking at too. Great. Well, you've been an absolute star. Appreciate no problem. Thanks for having us. me. Thanks. And if you're just watching, uh, appreciate you watching the video. As Chris said, there will be, you know, keep an eye out on social media and the website. And there will hopefully be further programs coming up ahead. And for myself and Chris, uh, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.